Okay, so this will bring me to the next and one of the most awaited questions, I guess. What uh, what kind of books or which books would you suggest for a beginner in astrology and for advanced? I mean, depending on your experience or some writers. It's very hard to learn astrology from books. I tell people if they're starting with Jyotish, they should start with my first book, Ancient Hindu Astrology for the Modern Western Astrologer. And then fairly quickly, just get the, learn the basics. You don't have to master it. Just learn the basics and then go to my book, The Art and Practice of Ancient Hindu Astrology. Uh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. The, I'm r- working right now. I'm, I'm getting close to the end of editing The Art and Practice. And that's going to be my first astrological ebook. That I would imagine would be should be able to August. I would say by November, December, that book should be on ebook. And then after that, I'm going to work on ancient Hindu astrology. But ancient Hindu astrology for the modern Western astrologer, that's the easiest book. I have three scrapbooks of people that mailed me letters. This was in the 80s before email. I have hundreds of letters from people that said, I've wanted to learn Hindu astrology. I never could until they got a hold of that book. Okay. But I do, I do want to alter the planets in the houses because back then I just went by what I was taught, what I was taught by others, but I made it very, very clear. I made the explanations clear so you could see how the system works. 20 years later, I wrote that book or 15 years later, I wrote the book Art and Practice of Ancient Hindu Astrology, because then I could tell you which techniques really worked and which ones didn't. But, but they'll be on ebooks soon. Um, I don't know. It's, it's very hard to learn from books for me. I, I learn by having a teacher, you know, is, is the, best, the best way. Yeah, and apart from the books which you mentioned, which you have written, what like for Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, you suggested one book. And apart from that, for uh, other areas, you would you suggest some book books? I don't like the books. Um, as a Western astrology book, the book by Isabel Hickey. Okay. H-I-C-K-E-Y. Now that was originally called Astrology, a Cosmic Science. Mm-hmm. Now it's been renamed something else. I don't know what it is. But if you look up Isabel Hickey, you'll find that book. That's the best Western astrology book. I also like Horoscope Symbols by Robert Hand. That's a Western astrology book. I like Robert Hand's work. Uh, I mean, there are other books. There are other Hindu Vedic books. One is David Frawley, Astrology of the Seers. Then there's a book by Hart Defoe. I mean, there's if you Google Jyotish books by Westerners, you'll find a lot of books. But um, it's hard. It's especially hard because you see a lot of different opinions as to what the houses mean, what this means. And like many times, uh, people will ask you questions like, I've seen in my career readings that Oh, will I have a career in marine engineering <laughs> or in computer games? So these these things are like at times not mentioned in the classics. So like well, for example, well, the mechanical technical skills and computers is Mars and the third house. Okay. Mars and the third house. If the third house is very very active and Mars is very strong, and the chart is not very artistic because the third house is the arts. Yes. Then you've got computers, computer technology. Okay. The third house and Mars. Okay. That'll be computers. And regarding money, sometimes people ask that, uh, how much money will I have? I mean, of course, we can always see the second house and the 11th house, but what is your experience on those lines? Can I take a break for a minute? Yeah. I just need a... Yeah. So what I was asking is, uh, what is your opinion on how much wealthy or how much wealth a person will have? Because we have discussed about Venus and marriage. Yeah, that's that's um, that's harder for me to see in Indian charts than it is in Westerners. 
Sometimes I'll be doing Indian charts and they will have made so much more money than I thought. But um, just because money is more important, I think, than doing something that's enjoyable. Um, to me, in this country, I have to look to see whether it's a money chart or an education knowledge chart. So if the second house is very, very strong and activated and planets are there, the question always becomes, is this person more interested in education and knowledge and writing and teaching, or are they more interested in money? Okay. Now in the charts of Indians that I do, money just is very, very important. So even though I can't see it in the chart, they're focused on money. Okay. So that, so it's hard for me to answer your question there. Um, you know, the only way I see it, you know, that a person's making huge amounts of money is from the connection between the second and the 11th. Mm -hmm. If the ruler of the second is in the 11th, big money. If the ruler of the 11th is in the second or vice versa, big money. But again, if Saturn is right on the ascendant, the person may not make a lot of money, but the potential is there. Okay. The potential is there. Now, the other thing is I want to look at Venus and Jupiter to see if their luck good. Okay. Particularly okay. Venus is a planet of money. Luck? Luck. Luck. Okay. okay. How are you going to make a lot of money without luck? Yeah. So I want the I want the benefics, Venus and Jupiter, to look good oh, okay. for money. And then thirdly, the eighth house. Well, the eighth house where they can get money without having to work for it. Mm. Okay. Now some people will look for the fifth house, which is investments and speculations, but I'm not looking so much at that. I'm looking more at the second house, the eleventh. Venus, you know, Jupiter, and then maybe the eighth house for the money from Will's legacies, insurance companies, things like that. Okay, so you are saying uh, if second house and eleventh house are having link and they are more strong, then the money can be more. And what is your opinion if the tenth house is having more planets? Tenth house has nothing to do with money. Oh, I mean, it just means successful career. But okay. it's the 11th, like when I'm, when I'm looking at the charts of people that made many, many millions or billions, there is very often a connection between the 11th and the second, the second house ruler and the 11th house ruler conjunct oh. the 11th ruler in the second in a good sign, the ruler, the second and the 11th well aspected. Those are the things that tell me big money okay. more, th more than anything. Okay, so you have not seen the 10th house playing that much of a role for money. You know, when you look at the horoscope in terms of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, the 10th house is a money house. One, Dharma is one, five, nine. If a person has, you know, focus on that, the Dharma, the purpose is important in general. Two, six, and ten, money. Three, seven, eleven, desires. Four, eight, twelve, moksha. The person can be successful because of the career. But if the money house is bad, you can have fame and not have money. Oh. Happens all the time. Okay. It happens all the time. People tell me, I get, I'm so respected, I do very well, they love my work, but I don't get paid much. And I say, well, look at your... Look at your Venus. Look at your second house. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, and then, and then again, if Saturn is with the ascendant or the ascendant ruler, the person may not have enough confidence to ask for the money they deserve. Okay. But if I'm looking specifically for money, first of all, you know, the thing is, it's really interesting because when you ask the question, what about this and what about that and what about this? The truth is, when a person asks me a question, 
after 35 years, you know where my where my eyes go? They go to the whole chart. Yeah, yeah. They actually go to the whole chart. <laughs> I look at the whole chart and I say, what's this chart about? And if the chart is about art or the chart's about, I look at it, oh, the chart's about art. Who the hell makes money with the arts? You know, oh, oh the person's life is about business. They can make money, oh. you know. So my chart... My eyes go to the whole horoscope and then I zone in on the second and the 11th for money and, you know. Yes, it's just, regarding well, this only, like you said, for the whole chart, like, so how, how do you differentiate in general that a chart is good for working under somebody or business? That's a difficult question um, because so many people are workers and I don't, you know, I'm at the top of my field, so my prices are a little higher than most people. So I'm getting people that are more on the successful side. Although that's not, although I get a lot of people with, that that also don't make money. But um, to me, if the if the chart is powerful, if the first house is powerful, the tenth house is powerful. I expect them to have their own career. Oh. It's, and but a lot of times Saturn gets in the way. And they're working a job. And I go, my God, with the talents that you have, you should have your own career. You know, okay. that's a difficult, it's a difficult question. But if the chart doesn't have a lot of power to it, then I think they they probably working, for, working for somebody, somebody. Okay, because you're saying for starting something of your own, you need some power, courage. The, the chart has to have some strength. Oh, okay. the, first, the first house has to have some strength. The ta you have to have some abilities, some, you know. Okay. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a chart where, where Saturn is in the ascending with the, <laughs> sun, with the sun or moon. Then they're, they're less, you know, they think, they don't think big. Okay. But it's, I don't know, it's, it's a hard question. And generally they say if the 10th and 6th have connection, then it is kind of a job. And if the 7th and 10th have connection, it is kind of a business. So do you have, do you see that? I have, I, I have no opinion about that. I've okay. never heard that. Okay. <laughs> if the, if the 10th house is with the 6th house, I'm thinking healing as a career. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. But I, maybe somebody knows something I don't know. Yeah, and what is your opinion on like uh, the eighth house and the twelfth house and link with the tenth house? Because many times people have the tenth lord in the eighth or eighth lord in the tenth. Or then you need to look for a spiritual career. You need to look if it's with the twelfth house. You need to look towards meditation, yoga, consciousness raising. If it's the eighth house, it can be astrology and metaphysical subjects, but. Um, it could also be research. Okay. The eighth house is hidden. A person in what we have here is called the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. It's a oh. hidden thing. Um, but if a person has a lot of planets in the eighth house, okay, they're likely to be doing research. Oh. Research. They don't want to be in the center of attention. They want to be behind the scenes okay. doing the research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that is why it becomes very difficult sometimes because the eighth house is also the house of prostitution and those hidden things and then it's research also. So sometimes it gets very tricky that you now which direction the person will go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I've ever looked to see where prostitution would be. I, so there was yes. one last chart, I think three charts. So should I share the screen again for the third chart? Of, of, of mine? Uh, no, uh, I think in the PDF there were three charts. Oh, Robert De Niro. Yeah, I'll just share it once. Okay. I did have Robert Nash just to show people yeah, that Robert De Niro and Robert John Nash. The Robert Na the 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 John Nash I was just show, showing that Venus was in a in its own sign, but his in this case the um, wait a minute I can't I have to look at the uh, I use the South Indian method 
Uh -huh. uh, in the John Nash one, um, the moon and the fifth house ruler are terrible. Oh. Venus is the fifth house ruler. It, it's, it's in its own sign, which is great for math, but it's also aspected by Sun, Rahu, and Saturn. So Venus has problems. But his moon is what really has problems. And that's so he had mental illness from the moon being in Scorpio next to Saturn and next to Ketu. But anyway, let's move to, um, to the Robert De Niro. The reason I wanted to talk about Robert De Niro, can you move the, the chart? Yeah. The reason I wanted to talk about Robert De Niro, just for a minute, is that his third house is magnificent. It's so obvious. The sun, and there's a Raja Yoga, Mercury, Venus a tight Raja Yoga of Mercury Venus yes. aspected by a full moon aspected oh. by a full moon and the sun is in its own sign in Leo. So this is obviously the chart of an artist an actor. And when he won his first Oscar was Mercury. No, no I'm sorry. Not his first Oscar. He won best actor in Mercury Venus for raging bull in 1980. <clears throat> and um, that was the Raja Yoga Mercury Venus running its Dasha Bhukti. Now he's coming to Venus Mercury, again, the Raja Yoga planets. Okay? So the Venus Mercury is February 2017 to December 2019 okay. is a Raja Yoga running its Dasha Bhukti. In 2019, there is a film coming out called The Irishman. Oh. And Robert De Niro plays the Irishman. Okay. And it's a book about the mafia and these very famous actors, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, a bunch of very famous actors. And it's directed by Martin Scorsese, who directed these mafia films. Anyway, I am thinking there's a very strong likelihood that he will again win the Oscar for that film, The Irishman. So that, that's the only reason that I put it up. But in, in 2000, the film will come out in, 19, in 2019, and then the Oscars will be in 2020. In 2020, transiting Jupiter will be in his seventh house, aspecting the first. And it will be um, aspecting those third house planets. So I think there's a good chance he'll win Best Actor again because he's in Venus Mercury, but we'll, we'll see. But I, this is enough. I'm, I'm getting tired. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. so we'll do another, uh, we'll do another at some point and find some other horoscopes to do. Yeah. It's almost two hours. I guess I have to put it in four yeah. or five parts, <laughs> but, um, but, but, uh, but it'll be interesting to see whether Robert De Niro wins an Oscar for this, because it's a very, very strong, you know, it's it's the it's the Raja Yoga planets running their Dasha Bhukti again. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and speaking on so many topics. And also, I forgot to announce at the beginning if they if the viewers you want a reading from you, then yep. you have your website. Yeah, they can go to jamesbraha.com. They'll see my website, or they can email me uh, jamesbraha at gmail.com. When I do a reading. I go over the entire horoscope. Um, it's a very, very full reading. And I explain to them why I'm saying what I'm saying, what the planets are doing. And I go through the dashas and buktis. I go through transits. I use some Western transits and progressions as well. It's mainly a Hindu reading, Vedic reading. I think but I do use next time we can do something in detail on how transits and these progression techniques, they affect the chart apart from the dasha, of course. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right then. Thank you very much and we'll Namaste. See. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see each other very soon then. Thank you very much. Thank you.